Hey everyone, welcome back to White Sparrow Living, loop 12-6. This is Wendy. If this is your first time here, welcome, and I hope you'll consider hitting that subscribe button down below, as well as the little bell right next to it so that you can be notified every time I upload a brand new video. Today, I'm so excited to be finally giving you my craft room tour, the space where I do all of my YouTube videos, my Etsy, and pretty much live here 24 seven. I'll also be showing you five Dollar Tree, Goodwill, Hobby Lobby, Target, Scandinavian, Boho, Modern Farmhouse DIYs. I don't even know what they are, but they're super cute and I hope you like them. And if you do, don't forget to give this video a thumbs up, comment, let me know what you think. Also, you can follow us on Facebook and Instagram under White Sparrow Living. And now without further ado, let's get started. For our first project, I'm going to be using this mirror that I got at the Goodwill for $3.99. These half beads from Amazon, and I'll have those linked in the description box below. And so this is a super, super easy one. There's no paint involved. I'm just gluing my half beads onto the outside perimeter of my mirror. And so this is going to go into the apartment of the friend whose space we're redoing as a surprise for when she gets back from her retreat. And so this is going to be on the wall, but I'm going to use it as a tray for this display only because it's kind of hard to show mirrors in reveals without having my big face in it. So all I did was went all the way around with my half beads. And then when I get to the end, if your bead doesn't fit and it's too tight, you can just take a piece of sandpaper and rub the two sides so that they fit snug as a bug in a rug right in between those last two beads. So the Scandinavian style is kind of just like a click away from the boho and modern farmhouse styles. So we're going to be doing my friend's house in that. And if you look on Pinterest, just under Scandinavian boho, you'll see lots of fun stuff and the way this looks. And so here it is all done. And like I said, I'm going to be putting it on the wall probably, but it sure is cute as a tray. So I don't know. I might even rethink that whole thing. For our next project, I'm going to be using two of these rubber sink mats, two large jars, and I have one that's plastic and then one that's glass, a solar stake light, and then the handles of four used Dollar Tree foam paintbrushes, and then some Waverly chalk paint in ink, and some wax in antique and then some black electrical tape to put our pieces together and then my hot glue gun and scissors and so what i did was first measure to see how large i needed to make my circle so that it would go around my glass jar we're going to be making a lantern and so these sink mats are 11 by 12 so you want to make sure that you use the same size on each side so that they match up and one's not bigger than the other so to cut these apart I'm gonna wrap one all the way as far as it'll go and then the second one will be the back side and so that'll go underneath the one that goes on top so I don't know if that makes sense but you'll see what I mean when we get to the part where we attach it so now I'm gonna use my Waverly chalk paint in ink and I'm gonna paint the entire piece and I just put it on a piece of paper towel so that it didn't go through to my work surface and then I'm gonna give these both two coats so that you can't see through it and it kind of looks like metal. So in keeping with that boho, modern farmhouse, Scandinavian look, this is kind of a metal look using the rubber mats. In a lot of the boho and Scandinavian decor, there's also the use of that wicker caning. And so I was gonna add some of the wax onto this and kind of make it look like more of a wood effect or that caning look, but I decided to go with just the plain black because I think that's gonna go better in this particular apartment. But that's just another option that you could do if you wanted to go that route. So now I'm gonna take the handles off of my paint brushes and they just pop out. And then I'm gonna use my Waverly wax and a makeup sponge to stain those in the antique wax and once you brush it on you just wipe it off with a paper towel and then if it's not dark enough you just keep adding coats until you get it to the shade that you like best 
So then I'm just gonna get my jar ready and get all of the ickies off of there using my acetone and a paper towel. So to construct this, I'm gonna take my solar stake and I'm gonna take out the part that has the light inside of it and I'm gonna mark where it is on my plastic lid because the plastic lid is gonna go on the top of the lantern and then I'm gonna take my metal lid that came on my glass jar and <laughs> attach that to the bottom of the glass jar. It'll make sense in a second, I promise. Then I'm gonna take my soldering iron or heat gun or whatever this is called and I'm just gonna start cutting out or melting the plastic so that my little stake will fit inside but it'll be held up by the top portion of the solar stake. So I'll just attach that back on top and then there's a little tabby that you will take out when you're ready to use it and then it'll light up whenever it's dark. So now I'm gonna take some E6000 and my hot glue gun and attach my metal lid to the bottom of my jar and then I'm gonna take my sink mats and I'll first take the small one and attach that using some hot glue. The hot glue won't stick to the glass for very long. So that was just kind of my way of tacking it down so that then I could attach my electrical tape to the sides. And that's really what's gonna keep it in place. So I'm doing the short side first because that's gonna be the back. And then when I go to do the front, it's gonna wrap around and kind of cover over the back. And then the seams will be in the back so that you don't see them as much. So now I'm going to take my paintbrush handles and glue those so that they're touching the surface of whatever you're setting it on and it looks like the piece is holding it up using those as legs. And here it is all done and I think this is so pretty and I love that pattern and since it's sitting on top of that lid it makes it look like those wood pieces are actually holding it up. So. And then I took out the little tabby and here it is with the light and it's so soft and pretty and it's not as blue in real life as it looks on camera. So I get a little blurry here because it's a little dark, but it's so pretty and I love it. For our next project, I'm gonna be using one of these tea towels from Hobby Lobby that I got for $3 and then some nylon yarn or string, I don't even know where I got this, and then a dowel from Walmart some jute twine and then again our antique wax and then i'm also going to be using my sewing machine but you could use either fabric tack or just your hot glue gun to make this little pocket at the top and so all i did was fold it over because that's where we're going to place our dowel rod so that it can hang on the wall so I'm just taking my antique wax and staining the ends of my dowel and I'm kind of running low on this so I'm not going to do the middle portion because that's going to be covered up anyway. So then after I get it to the shade I want by just placing it on there and then rubbing it off with a paper towel and just continuing to do thin coats until I reach the shade that I want. Then I took my iron and made the crease of where I'm gonna sew that pocket in and it makes it a lot easier and you don't have to use straight pins when you're stitching it with your machine. And so I did iron the entire thing but because I'm sewing it, it gets a little wrinkled from that and so I end up having to iron it again. So now I'm gonna take this nylon yarn or string and make little tassels to extend beyond the ones that are on there so that it looks less like a tea towel and more like a tapestry. So I do have to end up resizing these because I ran out and didn't have quite enough for the length that I wanted, but it was still cute because it was the different color and it really had a 
pretty contrast with the design of the tea towel. So this you could do with any tea towel that you find that you really like that has a really pretty pattern and make it coordinate with your decor. And the regular price of this was $6, but because it was in the spring collection, it was on sale and so it was only $3. So I just made my little tassels and they're not even really tassels, they're just loops of string. And I just tied little loops with the tassels that were already there. It was an odd number, so it didn't exactly match up, but I don't think it really mattered. It looks cute anyway. And that's another benefit to this boho Scandinavian style it doesn't have to be perfect and it's just supposed to be natural looking and that helps me a lot so once I fed the loop through the other little loops then I pulled the hanging part through that and let the strings hang down towards the bottom they were a little bit curly so I ended up taking my straight iron and flattening those out and then once I get it hung up, I'm gonna take my scissors and cut them off so that they're even all along the bottom. And to make the hanger, I just took a piece of jute twine and folded it over a little bit and then wrapped it around and fed it through the loop. There's a lot of loopy stuff going on here. So then I fed it onto one side of the dowel and then fed the dowel all the way through the pocket and did the same thing on the other side and they wanted to kind of close in on each other. They weren't staying put and separated at the ends of the dowel. So I just took some small elastic rubber bands and placed those at each of the ends and then that acted as a stop so that they didn't do that anymore. And then I just cut off the excess jute and it was done. And here it is all finished and oh, I love the look of this. I love stripes, I love these colors. And this is a different style I know than you're probably used to seeing me do. But that's one thing about doing other people's homes is that you can kind of experiment in other genres of decor. And even though it's not something that I'm doing in my house at this time, I love looking at pretty things. And I think this definitely counts as something pretty. So for a cost of $3 plus part of a dowel, which I think was 87 cents at Walmart, and then some yarn or string to add to the bottom, you can take any tea towel and make it beautiful. So I love this and I hope you guys like it too. For our next project, I'm going to be using this round board that I got at Goodwill, but it's from Target. And then some jute twine from the Crafter Square at Dollar Tree. This wood sign from Dollar Tree as well. And then a mop head. I'm going to be using some of the strands. And then my Waverly chalk paint in white and mineral and wax in antique. And then my hot glue gun and scissors. And so I got this for 99 cents at the Goodwill, and I don't know if you already know, but they usually carry some Target things, and you can sometimes get brand new items that Target has at the Goodwill for even less than it is at Target. So I just took the little hooks off, got my stickers off, and I always keep the little hooks in a plastic baggie because you can always use those in other projects. So I wanted to be really careful with the back of this wood. We are gonna be using the front for this project, but I just didn't wanna scratch it up or anything. So then I just had Michael J cut it in half, and that was kind of a debacle because it's a longer piece and so we do have a different saw that he realized would make it go all the way to the end but it wasn't set right because he was on the ground he didn't realize it didn't cut all the way through so i thought it was funny and i thought you might want to listen
<laughs> we really need to get a workshop so that he's not on the ground. So I just put the other side away and then I'm going to take my jute twine and if you pull it out the way that you're supposed to from the middle, it's all twisty and curly. So I didn't want that. So I went ahead and pulled it from the outside portion of the spool. And then I'm just going to use my finger protectors for this project because you definitely are going to need them. It makes it a lot easier because you can just push the jute twine into the glue and you're not going to burn your fingers. And if you don't have finger protectors, you could just use a popsicle stick and you're fine. They do have little holes in them, so you just don't want to keep your fingers on there for too long, otherwise it will get in there and burn them, but if you do it quickly, it protects your fingers and it's no problem. So I'm just going to start folding these over and attach them about an inch or so onto the board. And I'm just going to keep going and folding it over. And you actually get faster the longer you're doing it. Just like with anything, I think they say that it takes a third of the time, the second time you do something, that it did the first time you do something. So since we had to do this 70, 11 times, I got pretty quick towards the end. So once I do get to the end, I'm gonna take a little piece of a Dollar Tree placemat. You could use a ribbon or anything, but I just used more hot glue and placed it on top of there. I actually like the look of this too, but it wasn't going with what I needed to get done. So anyway, I'm just gonna get that all nice and tidy and then use a straight edge to get the cut across the bottom to make it all nice and even. So for the second part of this DIY, I'm going to use my heat gun to get the stickers off of the back of my sign and then just use some sandpaper to get the ickies off. And then I'm also going to sand off the glitter because otherwise that's going to go everywhere and get into my little fibers that I'm going to place at the bottom of this sign, actually at the top of the sign. So right now I'm painting the bottom part, which is going to actually be the top part. This is so confusing. And then I just used my ink chalk paint and then got that whole base painted. And then I'll paint the other part after this is dry. But first I'm gonna take my mop head and take some of the fibers out. And I ended up using 22 pieces. And so I'm gonna unravel them and make them into more of like yarn type string so that they hang from our sign. And so I just took my fingers and just unwound them and then I'm gonna start gluing those onto the back of my sign. I needed to paint them first, but I got a little ahead of myself and so I started gluing them before I painted the sign portion. So once I realized that, I stopped gluing and then I'm gonna go in with my white chalk paint and my mineral and some antique wax and then I'll start painting that bottom portion which is really the top of the sign. So I want this to look like a wood finish and so using those colors I'm trying to get the same color tones that are in that tea towel so that everything kind of coordinates and looks pretty. And so I should probably show you what I'm trying to achieve by doing all this because it probably looks like <laughs> you guys don't even know what's happening here. So here's some examples of kind of the look that we're going for in that Scandinavian boho style. But it just has the long fibers at the bottom of a half round wood piece. And these have some really pretty vibrant jewel tone colors, but I'm trying to stay pretty neutral. So that's what we're going for. And hopefully that makes sense now.
So I think we got the colors pretty darn close and it looks so pretty all together and just real organic and bohemian. So I continue adding my strands of my mop head to my sign and then I cut my strands with those angles so that it kind of mimicked the outline of that board. So then I took some scrap wood and if you noticed on the example photos they were kind of sticking out and one was on top of the other. So I made the smaller one a little bit further out and then used a thinner piece for the larger one that's going to go closer to the wall. And then I took my hooks that I took out of my round board and attached those to the back so that I would have something to hang it on. And if you can't find these boards from Target or the Goodwill, you can always use the round signs from the Dollar Tree. They don't always have them, but if you do see some, you could use it in this project. And here's how they turned out. And I really love the look of this. It's completely different and something brand new to me anyway, but it's something that my daughter really liked and she was really encouraging me to do something like this so that we could use it in our friend's apartment and so I just think it's so soft and so pretty and I love touchy goodness you know I like those textures and this really brings all those textures just to the forefront of this decor so very different but I really like it and I hope you guys like it too And so finally, I didn't realize those were gonna take so long, but welcome to my craft room. And this is where I do my YouTube videos and my Etsy orders. And so it's not really beautiful, but it is very functional. And I am planning to redo it because Michael J said he would make me some shelves that I have a little bit better access to. So we'll see how that works out. But first thing, most importantly, in order to get to the tops of my cabinets, because I had to store things up higher since it's such a small room, I do have my ladders in two different sizes. And since I am only 4, 11, and 3 quarters, I use those often. So this is where I sit, and this table is from my mother-in-law who passed away in 2016. So it's very special to me, but this is just kind of a 360 view of everything. And most of the containers and storage pieces are from the Dollar Tree or Walmart or thrifted items. So it's pretty inexpensive in this room. It's just that I spend so much time in here, I think it could be prettier. So if I'm sitting at my workstation, this is directly to my right. And I have this rolling cart that is actually from Target and that keeps my most used items. And so I'm able to pull that out when I start working. And I also have to pull it out in order to get into that cabinet. So on the side, I have a little bit of space where I keep my flat things like poster board and foam core. And so that just keeps them hidden and I don't have to see the ickies. So these are my little idea books and I have a completed file and then a to-do file. And I like to draw out my projects and kind of think those through before I make them. 
It doesn't always come out exactly the way I've drawn them, but it also helps with your color choices. So I'll use my colored pencils sometimes to decide what color a background's gonna be or my decals or fabric or ribbon. So this is just a really good way to get your thoughts on paper and get organized and you might even recognize some of my projects um, in my mo more recent videos and there's some things that i still haven't done yet so i just like to keep these and refer back to them and see what i haven't yet completed and then i can do those in future videos so i don't know if you'll think this is interesting but I do get a lot of questions and emails from people that are wanting to start their own YouTube channels. So just a little bit of insight into my brain and how I'm organized in my craft room. So here I have all of my glue sticks. I have my skewers and my chenille stems and those are right up top so that I can get those easily. And then I have my hair scrunchies because I always get hot and so I have to put my hair up. And then in these baskets, I have just the miscellaneous bobbles and bits that I use in different DIYs. And then I have a box full of my tags and banners and then my wipes for my hands and there's some scrap pieces like for the backs of my projects when I'm making hooks or things. And then this is my little remote for my camera so that I can just turn it off and on. And then my adhesives, E6000 and fabric tack, my leftover chenille stems so that I can use those for little hooks, my tape and adhesive pieces, my dowels and just miscellaneous wood pieces, and then my popsicle sticks and wire, and then my rubber bands and nylon ties and then you always have to have a junk drawer and then i have my jute twine and string and then my hot glue guns in the wide tip and then the little teeny tip and then my heat gun is in there too and then this little caddy has a bunch of stuff in it and so i have my tools and my ruler and then i have all of my paint pens then i have my pens and pencils and some of my sharpies that i use pretty often and then smaller tools like my cricut spatula and tweezers my big fat nail that i use to make holes in metal and different things the larger craft sticks that don't fit into my little caddy and then I have a lot of scissors and I have different sizes and I have another drawer full of them too. So then I have my utility knives and cutters. I think you call them Zacto knives. And then I have different sizes for different things that I might need. And then I have my wire cutters and my pliers. And then this little drawer has some different string thingies and then my sanitizing wipes and there's actually an empty drawer and so that's just cool to me and then this little stacking box set has straight pins and thumbtacks and then some extra shelf brackets and then a broken plate that my grandmother-in-law made and so that's just a keepsake and so then I have this big plastic three drawer set that I got from the Goodwill and that has my ribbon and my Dollar Tree items and not all of them of course but most of them and this just keeps it handy and close by. So in this ribbon drawer I've got the main ones that I use and I kind of have them color coordinated as much as I possibly can and these little boxes are all from Dollar Tree and this is just like a toy box for me because the kids love to come in here too and see some of the items that I have and some of them are actually toys so anyway I just have a couple of these drawers and then I have overflow that I keep in other places. So this is kind of a bummer down here. This is lost space, but this is my grandmother-in-law's sewing table and I do need it for the table space, but I have my roll of paper that I pull over in order to make my workspace nice and clean. So after I'm done with the video, I change it out and then I have a new piece of paper. 
And so this is my vinyl storage. And so I keep my scrap pieces of transfer tape that I get from the Dollar Tree in this bin. And then I have my cardstock that I wrap my decals in when I ship them out. And then some of my envelopes and my cutting board and my cutting mats. And I keep that all handy so that I just pull those out. But you'll see where I keep the rest of the storage in a minute. And then I have my 24 inch cutting mat as well. And then underneath, there's not a lot of space to keep stuff, but I have my trash can and then some other items. And then I have this paper storage that I have a thing for paper and you'll see I have more in other places. But this is my go-to when I reach for a rag or a paper towel to wipe my hands or my brushes. So everything's right here. And that's all nicely tucked under the side of my table. And I love these papers, they're so pretty. And then on the other side, I have my tripod with my light ring. And then I have this wood crate from Walmart that keeps my wreath forms from Dollar Tree and my hoops and just round big things. And I really want to get a handle on my cord situation. So hopefully when we redo this room, we'll be able to do that. And then this drawer has all of my paper cutters. And then I have some painting supplies in here, like the trays and things I don't use that often. This is my doily drawer and I have some small ones and large ones and in the cigar box there's some really cute little ones that I don't want to get wrinkled. And then underneath all these doilies I have my excess overflow of Dollar Tree ribbons. So I'll keep one of the patterns in my top drawer that I showed you before and then I'll keep the ones that haven't been opened yet in this drawer. And then I have my copy machine, my curling ribbon, adhesive my name tags and place cards for Thanksgiving and Christmas dinners, my cameo and my beautiful Cricut, and then my speaker is up there too. And then I have in these two boxes, one of them has small boxes and things that I could recycle and use. And then in the other box, I have some really cutie patootie fabric. And then this piece has my card making kits and different things in there. And then I have my glue guns and my rags. And then I have some maps and miscellaneous things in the back, as well as my pom poms back there. And so everything's kind of deep in as far as shelves in here. So I go two rows back. And so the things that I don't use as often, I'll put in the back rows or up high so that those things that are a little bit harder to get to aren't things that I'm going to be needing as often as the ones that I put in front. So in these plastic drawers, I have my ink pads and I used to do a lot of scrapbooking, but I don't really anymore. So I can't really throw them out because you can still use them in different crafting projects. So this is where I keep the stamps that I have left over. And in here I have my beads and I like to keep my grandma's earrings in here. Sometimes I'll use these to embellish different things with, and it's just a way of kind of keeping her in my crafting. And then over to the side, I have some Dollar Tree vases with some tall things and some used sponge brushes. I have my decorative scissors and rulers and then more fabric. And then in this bin, I have some bows that I didn't use but are already made. So I just keep those just in case. And then down here, I have my heat press from Cricut and all of those things, which I haven't used yet, but I plan on making some projects with those. And then I have some party stuff down below and then my jute twine and string and then rocks and marbles and fillers. And these are Dollar Tree boxes as well. And I like the ones that have lids just because it keeps everything nice and covered. And then again, it goes two rows deep. So I have more stuff in the back. And then this crate is filled with my different papers that I've used and so they're scraps but I've got them color coded and kept in a little plastic envelope so I have all my blues all my reds together and these Dollar Tree boxes are stackable and inside of them I have all my different ribbons the little scraps and I keep those in different color coordinated areas and then I have my scriptures and a Bible and just some things that I refer to every now and then 
And then up on top, I have all of my flowers. Well, not all of them, but here's a lot of my flowers. So this is what this whole situation looks like. And in these little cubbies, I have different things and they're all marked. So I have my tape here, my yarn here, but I also have some other yarn that I don't use very often and I keep those up there. And then I have a stuff box because this was just stuff that I didn't organize and it just is random stuff. And then I have my scrap fabric and then trash to treasure items that I might be using in the future. So I just tuck those away in there. And then I have my wood pieces and that's obviously all my wood stuff. And then here's some more Dollar Tree stuff that either is just kind of random or weirdly shaped and too big. So I just put it in here. And then some moss. And my rule of thumb is that if one of my containers is full, then I don't buy any more of it. And then here I have my box o buckets. And then I have my burlap. And this includes the burlap ribbon. And I also keep that mesh stuff, the shelf liner, because it looks like burlap. And Dollar Tree has some burlap right now, I guess for the fall season. And they have the dark brown and they have the regular beige burlap. So that's good. And then this drawer has my deco mesh in there. And I generally just use that for the holiday seasons. And then down here, I keep these craft projects that are, I think, from Oriental Trading that we used to use in our youth group. And so I keep those for the grandkids and for my niece who always love to do crafting with me. And then over here, I have some wrapping stuff. It's my tissue and bows and then my bags and then I have my cards. And so I keep these all organized according to the occasion so that I can always just grab a card if I need it for a birthday or sympathy or whatever the case may be. But I do love my greeting cards. And then I have another drawer of kids crafts and so I keep all of those in here. My grandkids and my niece, they love to come in this room and they have another spot as well, but they know where all of their items are. And then I have some bags and then some paper bags and then I have over on this shelf, you already saw the yarn is at the top and then I have my die cuts and templates and then over here in the back, that's a picnic basket full of more fabric. And then I have my scrap flowers that you guys have seen me use in some of my videos where I'll just throw out a couple of random pieces. And so I don't throw them away. I just keep them and then I do end up using them. And so in this little drawer, I have my foam core scraps and then if i need to keep something flat i'll put it up here and in this case these were those sink liners and so i'm trying to get those to get flat and then i have my foam my floral foam and different pieces of styrofoam and then i have these gardening kneeler thingies and so i count that as a form of foam and then down here i have bins that have my dollar tree blankets I have a bin of rope, which is full because of my friend Denise, who sent me a whole bunch. And so I like that these are see-through bins because I can't always see down below, but I can see through it to know what blankets or whatever items are in there and what they are. And so this one has rugs and chamois, and so I kind of fold those so that I can see all of them. And then this one has scarves and towels, but I did end up adding a canvas bag and a drawstring knapsack thingy. And then I have the kids' construction paper, some more cardstock, and then an old fashioned paper crimper. And then I have this toolbox that I'm getting ready to use in a DIY, but it's sitting on top of this laundry basket, which actually is housing my items that I can recycle or use for something else. It would have been trash bound, but hopefully I can make something with it. But at least I have it all in one place and it's ready to go if I need it. 
And then way up on top of my cabinet, I have some fabric, some tulle, and then some other fabric for a cross. And then up here, I have my cotton stems and some greenery, my contact paper. This drawer is full of shells and beachy stuff, and I just put all those in one place. And this is a tall plastic drawer container thingy, and I think I've got two. Yeah, there's two of them stacked on top of each other and then this is for my glass stuff and it's got the insides of frames that I've taken out and framed pieces and parts and then the glass is at the bottom so I don't cut myself when I'm reaching in there and then I have my art markers and so I've got lots of calligraphy pens and some Copic or Copic I don't know how that's pronounced so that all stays in here I don't know why my squares are in here because there's another drawer for those but that's okay and then in here I have my mail stuff so I have my labels for my Etsy orders and friend mail and my scale for postage and then this is some extra vinyl I have other places for this as well and then in here are my spools that I keep and another drawer where if it's full you have to throw it out even if it's one that you like or you can switch it out so if there's something that I like spool wise I can trade it but you never want to keep more than what that drawer will hold and then in here is just some miscellaneous white stuff that I just want to keep together because it's all in the white colors and I have lace and some filler and just pretty stuff. I love looking in this drawer. And then I have my pots, my clay pots. And so I have my Dollar Tree ones and then some Walmart ones. And I keep my sand in here because it didn't fit in my shell drawer. And so I figure clay I guess starts as sand anyway so it works <laughs> and then I have some more filler just the little Dollar Tree things and some petals rose petals then at the bottom I have some long hardware stuff from the Dollar Tree so anything that's long and doesn't fit in one of my bins I just put those all in here and then over here I have my tall stuff like the mop handles and dowels and just long stuff if I have wrapping paper inside tube thingies and my long bamboo skewers just everything that's super tall is this boring you guys I don't know <laughs> it's a lot of stuff I should have made this a separate video I did not realize it was gonna be this long but anyway this is where I keep all of those things and then above that I have all of my thread and then my calendar and this is where I know what day it is <laughs> and so let's see now I'm gonna go inside of my cabinets but I'm gonna go as fast as I can with this part so inside the first cabinet I have a bunch of Dollar Tree containers and this is kind of like the business area so these magazine holders i got all of that from dollar tree and they're really pretty cute and then i have my business binders like mike's work insurance mortgage vehicles etc and then these bins have like my checkbooks and this is my etsy box where i have my order forms and then envelopes and cutie patootie little stickers and decal instructions and then I have my adhesive vinyl and some other kinds of transfer tape and my Frisco craft vinyl and so that was a little plug for them because I love them and then I have some pens and pencils over in that other bucket and then I have my notepads and all of my paper for my copy machine I keep saying copy machine but it's a printer and then my composition books and graph paper and page protectors and then my different size envelopes for my Etsy shop and I keep those in these ugly boxes so that I know what size they are 
anyway and then I have my chopping mats over here just because that keeps them straight and I don't know why because I know exactly where they are so I just leave them there and then in these little bins I have my cotton balls some miscellaneous flowers and succulents and some bells and little thingies and then in this drawer I keep my god stuff where I have things that I want to read or whatever and then my Cricut and Silhouette owner's manuals and then these are napkins I used to write little notes in Michael J's lunches and so I found them one time in his truck and he had kept every single one that I had ever written for him so I thought that was so cute and I just needed a place to keep them so I put them in here this actually used to be the entire shelf was where I would keep my keepsakes and things so that's why they got put in that particular place so anyway and then this little bin is where I keep all of my receipts like from Dollar Tree or the Home Depot and it's usually pretty full but I just gave them to my mom because she does all the bookkeeping so she keeps them in a different place once I give them to her and then more paper and some pretty pens and then some more cardstock in those magazine holders from Dollar Tree and then over here this is the kids shelf and so this is their paint stuff and some crayons and then this little painting set that they got for Christmas and there's still wrapping paper on it so they haven't even used this one and then I keep their coloring books and project supplies so if they want to do some crafting they can get in here and it's on their level so that they know that they can get in here anytime they want and then this is kind of a hot mess but this is my camera equipment and microphone and some printer ink I just got this hard drive or no not I don't know what it's called but anyway something computer related and then just some miscellaneous hardware that I could use in a project of some sort so I just keep all of those in there and then I have some miscellaneous paper crafts and die cuts and then some pens for my silhouette and then the bottom shelf is just full of more paper oh my goodness this is not going any faster anyway okay so this is the other cupboard that's behind my workstation and so this i have full of different bins i have buttons and jewels some more ribbon some lace and ribbon in white and then I have all of my Dollar Tree glasses and bottles and things I can use in recycled projects. And then on this shelf is where I keep all of my wood boards and signs and plaques and things from Dollar Tree. And then we have a bunch of picture frames. And then my smaller plaques and signs. So I have just an array of everything that I could ever possibly need. So it makes it really easy when you're crafting to just be able to grab something and use it or maybe even just to start with that being the inspiration and thinking, okay, what can I do with this? So I'm really tired of talking now, so I'm just gonna take a few minutes to breathe and then you guys just take a look at everything. <laughs>
So I'm wondering if that's the way I should have done this entire video and just put it on fast forward since everything's marked and labeled anyway. I did want to show you my chair and this was the first thing Michael J got me when I first started my YouTube channel and knowing how long I was sitting at my table and working he made sure that I was taken care of and my fanny was comfy and I didn't have any back issues and so I love my lime green office chair. So I hope you guys enjoyed my little tutorial and my craft room tour. I hope it inspires you to get organized and make things pretty and start crafting, maybe even start your own YouTube channel yourself. So let me know in the comments if you like this video. Give it a thumbs up if you did and I hope everyone has a blessed day and remember to always be the light. Bye!